Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's play some Keeper RL here in 2022 on Alpha version 35 at the end of August with the latest release of this game and do a complete beginner's guide to see what's new in the game, what has changed over time, and to hopefully try to get more people playing this game because it is absolutely a sensational title. I'm a person who played the original Dungeon Keeper and enjoyed it many moons ago, and here we are with a beautiful twist on that where it's a roguelike that is effectively uh, very much akin to Dwarf Fortress except we are the baddies in this one. Although you can play as less baddies, but here we are going to play as some baddies. So we're going to just pick the wizard. And this is kind of the default character that the game provides you with. We have some plays with a necromancer, and we've tried a knight and some other uh, of the different characters you can choose. But I want to use the wizard for this guide because I think it's the easiest to get into and it's the truest in spirit to Dungeon Keeper. So we're going to go with the first name Doctor Incompetent. We're going to be a, a male keeper and we're playing keeper mode and we're going to start a new game. We're playing with no mods by the way, totally vanilla. Now I will say while the game builds, if this is your first time, I recommend doing the tutorial. It's actually pretty reasonable just to get a, a sense of things and then matriculating into your own build like this or if you want you can just dive right into your own open game right here so it says welcome to campaign mode the world which you see below is made up of smaller maps you'll build your base on one of them and we kind of have a selection right there for us there are hostile and friendly tribes around you you have to conquer all villains marked as main to win the game you can travel to other sites by creating a team and using the travel command. The highlighted tribes are in your influence zone, which mean that you can currently interact with them. Trade, recruit, attack, or be attacked. As you conquer more enemies, your influence zone will increase. All right. So all of that being said, our map is important to us, but most of what we're doing at the beginning of our tutorial is just establishing our base so we won't be coming to this map for a little bit of time but it's always nice to poke around and see what we've got here so the world is named Avanth okay and the base biome is mountains and you can select if you'd like to play on a different style of map you want to play with trees or plains or in a tundra or in a more desert style biome that's up to you i like playing on mountains personally because in true you know dwarf fortress fashion you can just cut your base into the mountains and this game has z levels going both up and down so you can kind of have a base that has some upper floors and some lower floors and it works out great so i like to just be uh, on a map that does have mountains and what we can see right now is this is where our home site will be. That's our keeper there. And then we see that there is a giant spider right above us, and they are a lesser villain. There is a cyclops who is a lesser villain. And then there is a tree spirit who is a lesser villain. Now, remember, as it said before, the highlighted ones are the ones that we can interact with and visit. And then there is a, a question mark but it's green and you can see that the dotted box here is green because this is an ally so we can go visit this ally it's highlighted it's within range it's our in our influence area and maybe uh, barter with them if we like or if we want to just be pure sinister evil we can just eliminate them from the game and take all their treasure whatever we want to do and then we have over here the warrior tribe which is a main villain an unknown ally up here. This is uh, Masichard, the main villain. Okay. And then you have Demon Den, main villain. And then there is an unremarkable dungeon, which is 
a main villain that we can explore. So all of these main villains we really can't get to unless we deal with the lesser villains yet and expand our influence. So I will say at this point, um, you can add retired dungeons if you want to add your own old dungeons to the game. Um, and you can change the difficulty here. If I click on this, um, additionally, <laughs> retired dungeons um, allows you to add not only just your local files, okay, but you can bring in people's files from online. So if you want to just randomly have somebody else's dungeon that's been uploaded to the server with their characters and stuff and you want to add it to the map, go ahead and do that. I'm not going to at the moment, but if you want to spice it up, try it out. Now, even though, for example, that the spiders are like right next to us, I don't want you to think that the proximity really plays into this too dramatically. In order for anyone to get to you or you to get to them, you have to kind of go to the edge of the map and then go to a loading screen that brings you back here to go to another tile. So it's not like they're just going to wander right over at us, okay? So don't worry that they're next to us. It's no problem. They won't come and get to us. They don't even really know that we're there at the beginning. We don't have enough of a reputation for people to know about us. But as we start expanding our army and wiping people out, words of our evil exploits will go far and wide. And people might want to come and try to take us out. So we'll need to fortify our base for that eventuality. But it doesn't come for quite some time. All right. So I like this map just fine. I'm going to click confirm and get into it. So as we zoom into Keeper RL, it does tell us right here that this is Keeper RL Alpha 35. And these are patch notes um, from July 4th, okay? Uh, and there are even more recent patch notes because the version I'm playing, I think, is like August 16th or something like that. So there's been a lot of hot fixes and changes. And as it says here... Um, you can go to KeeperRL.com to see even more up-to-date changes. Sometimes this screen, when you come into the game, doesn't change for months. So uh, it, it could very well be uh, a little bit older, but all of this information should be legit. Rebalanced combat favoring large numbers of units. Equipped weapons rendered on all units. So that means that uh, graphically you'll see what weapons the sprites are carrying. Configurable key bindings, which is cool and moddable attributes buffs and body materials okay so that's uh a lot of that is for the necromancer but for now it does tell you to go with the tutorial but we're just going to say no thanks we're ready to go and i'm immediately going to push the space bar and just talk to you about what we see on the screen okay so here is our starting zone. Uh, you can zoom in or out with the mouse wheel, and this is as zoomed in as we can get. You can move the map around with the arrow keys, okay? Um, and you can also hold right click and drag the mouse to move the camera around if you like and explore the map. Right here is me, the keeper. All right, so I am a dungeon keeper. I've got my little staff here and a robe on, and I have imps that are around me as minions. Now, I pushed spacebar because this is a real-time game, and you can pause the game at any time by pushing space, and uh, akin to perhaps any kind of simulation game, RimWorld, even SimCity, whatever, you can have the game go at normal speed, which is one, two, actually one is slow, two is normal, three is fast, four is very fast, or just spacebar. So you can speed up and slow down time as it moves, but I'm gonna pause it so that we can really look at stuff without accumulating any time uh, and giving enemies an advantage of any sort. So we start here, okay, and like I said, we have our keeper, which we can see and is outlined by this circle, and four imps. Now, the imps are our workers. They're going to do all of our jobs and labor that we assign to them, and they're great at doing it. 
Now, in the upper right of the screen, you'll see the mini-map, okay? And it will display what we are able to see. But if I left-click on the map, I expand it and I can see things better. And this is actually kind of useful for the moment. Um, I can click on it again to shrink it. But let's take a look at this map. This is showing us that here's what we can see, right? So all of this kind of illuminated area is what we have access to seeing right now, and everything else is concealed by the fog of war. But also what we can see on the map are the question marks, which indicate groups of enemies or special areas of interest, okay? And so this could give you a feel for, like, where the tribes of humans or dwarves or ants or whatever is on the map with us might be living. And then these blocky zones in different colors are indicating to us some minerals that are on the map, right? It could be stone, gold, metal, things like that. So we have a sense of what is there, but in order to really find out, we're going to have to send some scouts or just look over in that area eventually. All right, I'm going to click on the map to make it small. Now, also, if I just move around, there's even more visibility, okay, on the map itself. I can zoom way out and look right here. This question mark that we see right here that says, quote, surprise in the lower right, hilarious, is up here as well on the minimap, and then you can see here's the brown and the two uh, kind of light gray sections on the minimap correspond to granite here and iron. So we've got two stone deposits of granite and an iron deposit here. Down below here, we see these three uh, resource deposits. It's granite, iron, and iron, and here's another surprise and another surprise, okay? So you can see how these correspond to the minimap and tell us where things might be so we can plan our base accordingly. All right. Now, on the bottom of the screen, you will see there is a ribbon that tells us how many of each resource we have, how many population we have. And this is important because as um, a wizard beginning, we basically are the only count population of ourself as the keeper the imps do not count against our population cap which is tremendous which means as soon as we get enough money to summon more imps we can do so without worrying about our population and increase our labor rate uh, it tells us um, what turn of the game it is so 30 turns have already passed what day it is or what time it is rather um, so it's daytime right now and nighttime will fall and different things happen in day or night and it doesn't affect us as much as it does say the necromancer but it still is important to know now you'll see as i'm mousing around um in the lower right the tooltip will display oh this is grass and it's outdoors and it gives the position on the map of this okay also some more things about the minimap Below the minimap, there is an icon that looks kind of like a compass rose. If I click on this, it will go back to the world map screen, okay? So it'll show me the campaign map, like here's me. It just kind of give you a feel for like what's out there again. You can close that. And then this button centers on the keeper. So if you ever lose your keeper, like you're way over here or something like that, you can just click below the minimap on the little wizard hat guy and boom. The map will center on our keeper again. And you'll see that it says ground under the minimap. That's telling us what Z level we can see. Right now we're on ground level. And you can click the left or right um, angle brackets to go up and down the Z levels, but we can't do that right now because we haven't seen up or down on the Z levels. We haven't built staircases up or down, so we don't know or have a means to get there, so we cannot change the Z level uh, using these toggles, okay? Now, on the left, there is a column that gives us all of our commands, and there are four main categories, all right? So there are the orders, okay, which we can give. 
there is this kind of like skull with horns which is showing us our military effectively like the units that we have and we can create um, groups to fight if we wish this book screen shows us the technologies that we know and the technologies that we can learn so we are level one we have zero experience out of a hundred and we start with sorcery because we're a wizard which means that we um, ha can learn basic spells. We have advanced sorcery unlocked as a technology to research with level up progress. And we can build a wooden bookcase and a fun wizard hat. Now over here on the question mark, there is a cool help screen that tells you how to capture prisoners, build, uh, do stuff outside, build structures outdoors, do Z levels, and on and on, and you can explore this as you will. But right now, what we want to pay attention to is the orders panel. So the first thing we want to do is start building our base. We don't really have a place to live. We need to be a dungeon keeper, so we need a dungeon to keep. So that's going to be our job at the moment. So I'm going to go to structure. Okay, and I'm going to click on this and it will open up some more commands for us. And really all I want to do right now is dig. And this will open up dig or cut tree. And now my mouse uh, tooltip or my mouse cursor icon changes to show you a pick and a shovel, meaning that this is what I'm doing. And I can click on, for example, this square and say dig. Okay, and then I can click here. I can left click to indicate just square by square or I can hold shift and then hold down left click and then drag to make like a giant section or box that I want to either chop down if they're trees or dig out if it's mountain like this. So I'm going to cut a home into the mountain uh, like this. We're going to have just one tile that comes in. Okay. And then as soon as we get in, I'm going to expand and make a uh, hallway that's three tiles wide because I love just a beautiful grand entryway. And we're going to get that going. Now, what's cool about this game is that you can very effectively, just starting right away, begin planning your base and start mapping out room by room where you want to have things but as this is probably your first time or you know one of your first times playing number one i will tell you don't worry about having perfect efficiency or room size or even room location too much uh, you have a lot of room to work with you can always just scrap this beginning base that you make and go deeper underground and build a more uh, defendable base down there or go up the mountain or whatever you want to do so don't fret too much about this but we know that there's a few things that we need so right off the bat one thing that I want okay is to look in here to see how deep this goes okay so we're gonna kind of just let them go in there but I also need a bunch of trees chopped down so you'll see if I click on the trees these also will be selected and actually I can just shift and drag to select just a huge chunk of trees that I want taken down. And I want basically all of the trees that we can see right now taken down. I want as many trees as possible. If you don't want a tree cut or something dug, you can just click on it again uh, to turn it off, all right? And so after this happens, I'm just gonna unpause the game and put it to normal speed by pushing two. And you can see that my imps are gonna go out and start working. And immediately they've chopped down the trees and turned them into wooden planks, okay? So what we're doing at this phase is we're starting to dig out a place for our base and collect resources to build things within our base, all right? Now, true to Dwarf Fortress or RimWorld or any kind of colony management game, You'll notice that even though I've chopped down all of these trees, these wooden planks aren't showing up down here on the ribbon as part of the wood that we have access to. And this is because they don't 
belong to a stockpile. They are not stored, all right? So what we want to do is immediately build ourselves a stockpile, all right? Now, you'll see that my imps are really prioritizing chopping down the trees. Now, I don't know if it's because I selected the trees last and they do whatever was most recently selected first instead of what was queued up before. But if you ever get to a point where you're like, hey, that's cool that you're chopping down the trees, but instead I want to be doing this digging project, why don't you do that? Here's what you can do. So you can, of course, just go around and, you know, uh, push shift and drag out a section and just like um, deselect all of this stuff by uh, not, I'm sorry, holding control makes the boxes turn red like that and you can turn off a large section. Shift toggles on, but then left click, you could just manually do this or you could just hold control to turn that off, right? I'm gonna do this and turn this on, keep these on. So you could turn it off as an option, that's one thing, but you can also give them direct orders, which is down here on the uh, orders panel. So you can click orders, all right, which is the third from the bottom, and you see that there is another window that opens up and it says claim tile, unclaim tile, and then third from the bottom, there's a selection that says prioritize task. Now I can come over here and I can now click on this tile that we want to dig out and you see that it turns from yellow into green. And when it becomes green, that means this task is of higher priority than your regular run in the mill task. All right. So I'm going to tell them, hey, can you actually prioritize this whole digging project that we have over here? And you'll see that as soon as they're done with whatever job that they had going, they're going to come over here. But this is important. You'll notice that only one of them came over here to mine out this operation. And that is because only one of them can work on a tile at the same time. They can't do like teamwork and all work on this square, at least right now. So, uh, and this is something that Dwarf Fortress does like this too. So what I always do to work around this, especially when I'm digging, is I like to build hallways and such that are three wide because this allows many more workers to come in and start chipping away at things instead of if I made this whole hallway just one uh, tile wide, then only one imp at a time could work on this and it would just, you know, uh, be a bit slower. So I like to have this going on in this fashion and I just like to have big spacious hallways to stroll around in so that my hallways don't get congested okay uh, with lots of things coming around and it's easier to see what's going on now two keyboard shortcuts to know right off the bat you can push D to immediately open up dig or cut tree and you'll see that by just pushing the D key my cursor has changed into the dig or cut tree icon. And if I push A, you'll see the little imp as my cursor icon. That is the icon for prioritize task. And that's what we just did by turning this green. So you can use D and A, you use them all the time uh, to assign jobs and just push escape if you want to turn that off. I'm going to unpause it and watch this guy dig. And he's digging and he's digging. And now look, all my other guys aren't doing anything because the trees that I've selected as a job have all been cut down. So let's make some more digging projects for them to do. I'm gonna just shift drag a huge section up here to dig, but I don't really want them to cut down this rock. So I'm just gonna push D and left click on this rock. Don't, don't dig that away, just cut down trees, please. And then they're gonna go do that as soon as I unpause it. Now because we're playing the wizard, all right? Down here on the bottom ribbon, there is like this sinister looking hooded figure. And above it, there's a question mark. And then you're going to see an imp and a goblin artificer, okay? And what this means is these are minions in the area 
that we can recruit, okay? So for example, if I wanted to hire another imp, all I would need to do is click on this to get a new imp, but you have to meet the requirements. This imp, as it says in the box here, costs 30 gold. We don't have 30 gold, so we can't get that. So that's too bad. Now this guy right here is a goblin artificer, and he would be tremendous for us to have because he will help us make weapons and other things for our army. But it says he requires a bed and a forge or a workshop or a jeweler, okay? So we don't have those things at the moment, and these are all things that we want to start building. Now, the units that show up here only stay there temporarily. So this guy, by the time we get all this stuff built, might not be an option anymore. But in general, you're going to see goblins that you can hire as artificers, people that make stuff for you, but also fighters, you know, warriors and things like that, that will show up here that you can snag. But you'll see artificers enough, and we know that we want one anyway, so we're gonna start preparing for exactly that, all right? Now, let me talk a little bit to you about what you see on this screen for Shamunk, the Goblin Artificer. Okay, there are icons that display that are pretty self-explanatory, okay? And there's a sword that says 12 plus 3, and what that means is that's basically its combat rating. You know, it's taking into account its skill at combat and its equipment and giving you a kind of number, and you can use that number to estimate how much damage is going to be dealt and just get a relative gauge on their strength as a warrior. Now, just comparing it to an imp, which has five plus one, you can see that this guy is way stouter, way better in, in a battle than my imps are, which is understandable. You know, the imps don't really have any equipment. They have their like little pick, that's about it. But I don't really want to send this guy into battle. I don't really care about how much of a fighter he is, unless it's an emergency. What I care about more is his skills. So there's a shield indicating his defense value, but then you see all of these other indications where there's like a forge, there's a workshop, uh, and there's an alchemical distillery station. And these all are telling you what this guy's crafting skills are at in certain vocations and this is why the artificer is good because they're good at building things at a workshop or a forge for example right and that is fantastic that's why we want that unit so given that we know that it's going to help us start planning out what we want to do in our dungeon now by the way you'll see that our keeper is just standing here doing nothing your keeper doesn't really do much in this game because in true bureaucratic fashion, you're kind of a delegator. And what your keeper is going to do is periodically just walk around and uh, like discipline or motivate your imps by striking them and just being evil. And they will work harder when that happens. But that doesn't mean to, that your keeper is useless. In fact, your keeper is quite good because your keeper, if you're a wizard, we have some spells. So we have some spells that we can use and we can get better equipment that you'll see displayed here. Like right now, we just have a wooden staff and a robe. But if we start getting some gloves and boots and jewelry and the shield and some more armor and stuff, we'll become stronger. All right. And that means that uh, we will be better at defending our base or we can go with the army and raid if we want to send our keeper out on raids. But in general, I don't always do that because if your keeper is killed in this game, you lose. Game over. Okay, so protecting your keeper becomes important. Now, that being said, look, our keeper has this ability right here, which they can fully uh, restore health, okay? So that's great. Now, the other thing I will say about this um, artificer screen while I'm thinking about it is it says turns left 498. That means this guy will be available for us to draft or recruit for 498 more turns, all right? So 
Like I said, not very much time, but hey, it gives us a game plan. So let's just let this guy dig out. Now watch this. As soon as this dude digs out that tile, now, because we have this three wide, more people are going to start people. I'm going to say that a lot. I apologize in advance. I sometimes call my workers people, even if they're zombies or they're imps. I, you know, it's... I don't mean to be speciesist. I just... It's default. But anyway, these are imps. Now, what we have seen is, now that the fog of war is lifting, we have a problem, which is that there's shallow water right here. I don't really want to dig into shallow water and have that kind of opening into our base so instead i'm just going to push d and i'm going to turn off the dig on those squares because i don't want to go into the water i want to dig around that all right so i'm going to have my guys keep digging this way so i can see exactly what's going on now i'm going to pause it again and i just want to say um, it might look slow, like I don't have a stockpile build, I've got a lot of things to do, I don't have very much planned out. You have a lot of time as the game exists right now before any threats are going to be coming. So don't even worry right now, just chill and let your imps chip away at the mountain and plan what you want to do, alright? Yes, the only thing that's going to happen is like we're going to lose access probably to, to this artificer but look there's another artificer that's coming in right behind it okay now that's great all right and we see the water down here and now it's time to uh, create our first little runoff on this room so I'm gonna try to just make a small room right here and see how that goes okay So they're digging over here. This imp is idle. Now you can click on your units, okay? And it will show you, all right, on this screen, what's going on with your unit. Like what attributes does it have? What abilities does it have? How does it attack? What is it carrying in its inventory? On and on and on. And then you can also see, okay, like for example right here, this is its digging skill, which is 15, which is good. And it says its activity is idle. It's like, I'm not doing anything. Now you can click on this activity indicator and you can toggle on or off certain things. So it's like, if you don't want this guy to ever do construction, you can just disable it for this one particular imp or you can disable construction for all imps by clicking over here on this second column. Now, I don't want to do that. I, in, in fact, want to keep it as it was, but I just want to show you that. And that means he's not doing anything, so he needs to have a job, right? So that means we don't have any more trees queued up for him to uh, work with. And so let's just go give him some trees. Let's just map out some trees. Now, I could just build my stockpile outdoors, okay? so that this guy could start like moving resources to the stockpile but i like to keep my stockpile indoors and it's just a something that i always do the resources don't rot or deteriorate like they do in RimWorld or something but what i am worried about is i don't want um my people to have to imps goblins you know citizens in my group well, they're not citizens, uh, necessarily. It's, uh, this is not a democracy. We've got a despot in charge here. But anyway, um, I don't want them to wander outside to get stuff. Like, I like to keep things indoors and protected. Now they're all going to do that because all of the digging activities are done. So I'm going to have this hallway continue this way. And I'm going to zoom out. Now watch this. If I try to select this... You'll notice that this whole section can't be selected. It's been grayed out. And what this is indicating to me is that there is like a river or there is a cutaway in the mountain right here. There is no longer anything for them to dig. And this is a really useful strategy that you can use for just getting a feel for what's on the map. So let's say I just drag this out right here. 
pretend like I want to dig this. Now you'll see that what this shows me is that this surprise looks like it's located within, like, on the river itself. Um, and it's not these four pillars uh, look to me like this is a, a special chamber and this is going to be a statue of uh, a sinister god that we can choose to interact with or not. Over here, these resources are cool. You'll see that this section um, is all haphazard and this looks a little bit more deliberate so this might be um, ants perhaps over here and it looks like we might not at least that I can see have any humanoid creatures usually if there's humanoids like bandits it'll be more organized and uniform like this but this looks pretty good so this could very well be dwarves or something else but we'll figure it out but this is a great way while you're mapping around to just see what's available see what's going on on your map so you can get a sense for what's happening in your section and what to plan for now i'm just going to be like okay that was good but i don't actually want you to dig this so i'm just going to control and you know pretty much clear away everything that i just did so I'm just going to control drag and, and get rid of all this uh, that I've done and filled in. And now we're back and we're good. And let's keep digging. I'm fine with this. Now, as we can see more over here, I might want to stop this digging operation. But for now, this is fine. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push the O key um, and I can put a door uh, on the front of my base and I will indicate that. Now, when I put a door, um, you'll see that it brings up this door screen and it shows me that a door cost, a wooden door anyway, cost five wood. And I built it, but it's red because we don't actually have the wood to build it yet. But we will soon enough. But you can plan it out. You can say, hey, go build this. And now you see on my ribbon down below that I'm actually in debt, five wood. Ooh, a special unit. So, um, there's a legendary craftsman that has shown up. And that's indicated by this kind of like orange circle around the unit. Unfortunately, he has a permanent trait of being insane. So, you have to make the choice. Like, do I want a legendary craftsman who is insane? Or do I want just a regular craftsman who is not insane? And, you know, for me... Not insane? Alright, now, one thing I want to do is I definitely would like to uh, build a torch, okay? So, I'm just going to go ahead and go to Installations and select Torch. And you can just click on the wall and start building these to provide light. And the great thing about torches, okay, are that they're free. So, you don't have to spend any resources you can just put them wherever you want now you can either go to installations and then select torch or you can just push the c key to select torch and they'll kind of like put it on a wall all right and i like to just have enough light now when i mouse over something okay um you can see that there's going to be a torch planned there and we will start to uh see the illumination level soon enough Lighting is important. Okay, so now we have this lit, all right? And you can see that this is, like, much brighter in here. This hallway is dark because there is no torch yet. And this guy, all right, he's working inside, okay? Uh, and you can see that as he's working, his materialization, materialization is at 100%. Now, materialization is awesome. It's just a, an imp ability, and you'll get to see what that is in a moment. Now, this room is really small that we built because we need to see some more stuff. So I'm going to actually start here, and we're going to build another room that's going to be uh, enormous. Okay, so I want to build a room 
that's about this size and we can put the doorway right there and now this guy will have a job and uh, start working he's putting in the torches for us now what I want to do with this room is I'm going to push D uh, oops O to build a door right there this room right when we come in I'm going to make this a small library so I'm just going to build like um, a wooden bookcase here and here okay now you want to make sure that there's enough room all around the bookcase for people to come in and work at it and this is where people can study and level up their magic now again they can't do anything right now uh, because we don't have the lumber but we can plan this out now the reason I wanted a library right up front and you don't have to do it that way if you don't want but I like it if like I had any spellcasters who were studying if anybody tried to come raid me they would be like right by the front door and ready to roll out but again that's a long way off we don't have to concern ourselves with that right now I'm going to start putting in some torches all over the place get this lit and this room is going along nicely oops almost dug into this I paused the game immediately. Let's stop digging right now. No more digging. I don't want to open up the water. So if you dig into the water, it's not the end of the world. You can go over here and what you can do is go to structure and you can like start trying to build a wall. Okay. You could build uh, a pillar or you can just go ahead and try to, to uh, build a wooden wall or something like that. Uh, or you can even just build a bridge to go across the water and that's fine but know that like if there's bats or things that can fly and or even if this is this water is shallow so enemies can just walk across it they can then just come into your base so i like to generally keep that closed off if possible i'm gonna put a torch there okay i'm gonna put a door here someday okay now that we've got this much dug, I'm going to actually push D and turn off this section. And this is a very popular strategy for planning out your dungeon. What you can do is like map out a room and then just deselect some of it. Like even just the doorway, for example. Like watch this. I'm going to go ahead and dig and I'm going to say, oh, I really want um, this hallway. Uh, even though I have a torch here, I'd actually like this hallway to... Uh, loop around this way so we can get some more space going right but I don't want them to do this right now so I'm just going to cancel this part of it so now nobody can reach this that I've planned but it's there and I could use this to map out but they won't work on it and I'm going to do that because as soon as they finish digging these last two tiles which they just did I'm going to push C I'm going to build a torch here and a torch here for now although they'll probably get destroyed and I'm going to go into storage okay so this green box over here is where we start building our stockpiles we're gonna go storage and I want to build a green storage zone for resources and I'm going to just start it here and shift drag it out like that green means resource stockpile and resources would be anything like lumber metal gold stuff like that so they're going to start um getting those for us they're putting in the torches at the moment all right now let's see what they do let's see if they go get the resources for us and eventually they will sometimes it takes them a second to like locate a new job to do but now here they go and watch this they're picking it up, they're picking it up, and they can carry a ton, okay? So these guys are great because they... I don't know if they materialize the lumber or what they do to it, what kind of magic the imps use, but they could just carry an amazing amount of wood, and they're doing it. And as soon as they dump it in the stockpile, boom, boom, you'll see that now down here, we have a surplus of 81 wood. And now this guy is taking that wood and he's going to go ahead and build this door. All right. 
And, yep, he built a bookshelf for us. And you'll see something start to happen immediately with the bookshelf, which is the keeper is going to go here, and you'll see his job, his activity has turned to studying, which means he's going to go here, and this is another reason why I wanted to build bookcases. He's going to go into the library and start reading books to level up his magic. So now he's like training himself and magic is right here. This is his spell damage, right? And so he's going to start leveling this up by learning more magic. Okay? So that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right. Now they're getting the rest of the wood together and that's good. I'm going to actually start digging some more rooms. So I see water over here. Where is this water? Whoops. Um, let me get rid of that for a second. Uh, let me just do this. Where is this water? Okay. So again, you can use the shift drag technique to really see where this water is, and it's over here. So what I would like to do is not dig on any of these tiles because it goes too close to the water for me. So I'm just going to get get rid of this with control. And I'm going to say I need some rooms, all right? So uh, what I need is... Uh, to have a workshop and we need some bedrooms so there's a few things that we want done all right so i'm going to build a smaller room right here which will be a workshop and i'm going to just put a space in between this and build a, a larger room here actually you know what um i'm going to build a smaller kind of room like this for now I do want to have a hallway go here, and let me just see how where this river works. Okay, good. So, uh, I'm going to actually, yeah, we'll put this here, and then this, and then this, and then there we go. We now have a 3x3 three three hallway, and I'm going to just get rid of all this. Fantastic. I want to work towards this iron eventually, so we can get some iron ore. And I'm going to turn off this because I want these rooms dug out first. And I'm going to make these rooms a little bit deeper. There. Beautiful. By the way, I'll show you another thing. If you push D to get the dig screen, if you keep pushing D, it moves the selector down this list of options. So you can use this as a key command to just kind of cycle through the structures that you can build. All right. And you'll see, look, they already gathered all the lumber <laughs> that we chopped down. Imps are really fast, and we have 511 wood surplus after building all of these doors and everything. Beautiful. All right, so I'm actually going to just take this away. I don't really want this stockpile to be much bigger than this right now, so I'm just going to push D and then Control and get rid of that. All right, now they're digging down there. I'm going to push O, put a couple of wooden doors on here. And you'll see that we've got a bunch of things going on here to hire. We have a goblin warrior who um, is good with archery. We have a few artificers, and we have a goblin priest. And these uh, priests are great. These are all good, but they need beds. So we're building a bedroom and a workshop. And I'm just going to start blocking in torches so that we have light. And I can go ahead and push forward to speed this all the way up because we know what we want to do, and this is fine. All right, as they're doing this, I'm going to put a torch here and a torch down here. And now, this room, I want it to be my workshop, so I'm going to go to crafting, and we're going to just build a workshop, and we're going to put it right up here and another one over here, okay? And then I'm going to go to storage, and I'm going to just put an equipment storage right here, uh, like this, below the workshop. It's a very small one. It's just a starter's place. But this is where they will put finished goods that they make. Okay? I'm going to put a torch here. And a torch here. All right. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start building beds. So we're going to go back to the order screen, and you're just going to pretty much have this open... Uh, for most of the beginning of the game, because this is when you're planning out and building your base. And now what I want to do is go over to the living section, where there's this little bed, and we're just going to build these guys some basic beds. Make sure whenever you're building stuff, 
that you have room all the way around it as much as you can so that people can use it, all right? So in this case, all of these beds can be used, but if I try to like stack them like this, it won't work, okay? So I'm just going to deselect these middle beds. And this is a good start for us. All right, look, we just built the workshop. So that means I can actually go into the artificers um, and you'll see that that artificer, we hired him. And the reason we could hire him is because we just finished one basic bed. So now, as soon as we click on that, he took no gold, he's just in. He's like, I'm an evil goblin. I mean, I hate to use that word, but he's like, I'm a goblin artificer. I'm on the prowl, I'm looking for a place to go. What do you have for me? You have a bed and you have a workshop? That's all I ask. And so he's in. So Garzorn is in and he's coming. And as soon as he gets here, we're like, hey, we need stuff for our upcoming army. So I'm going to click on the workshops. Okay. And now we can ask things to start getting built. It, uh, it opens up this screen here and it tells us, bam, what do you want to make? couple of other things to note on the top you'll see it says a goblin artificer joins your forces up here okay and this is you'll see messages appear on the top of the screen occasionally and this is kind of where the log is and then down here at the bottom you'll notice our population has gone up to two out of ten because the artificer does count against our population he is part of our army now I want to build some basic stuff so here's what we need all right, we need clubs, and I'm going to build, actually, uh, let's see, if I get two artificers and the rest army, I'm actually only going to get one artificer, I think, at the beginning, and that means that I'm going to need a bunch of clubs, so let's get six clubs for now, six sets of leather armor. You'll notice that clubs take wood. Leather armor actually takes nothing. It just takes time for your artificer to do it. You can hire one or two artificers. It's up to you. And we can build six helms. And I'm going to build six boots and six shields. The shields do take wood. Six gloves. Okay. And we're rocking. All right. Now you can build a hand torch if you want your guy to like walk around with the torch when they're exploring if it's dark. And you can build this ridiculous wizard hat okay which gives you five spell speed a spell damage but minus two combat damage and i'll build one all right so now we have this ordered list of production going on and they will build things from the top to the bottom and when they get done they will um the imps will put them into the blue equipment stockpile that we've built all right so this guy will come and he's checking things out pretty soon this guy will immediately go over here and begin working now i'm going to hire this priest and um that's it there's more goblin artificers here but that's enough for me so we're gonna have to give our imps some things to do so i'm gonna turn on these digging projects and i'll put a torch there and here we go and check this out at the top a goblin priest joins our forces it says you need weapons for your minions indeed we haven't built any yet we're working on them and it says we just reached spell training level two and we learned the spell of escape so if i click on my character you'll see that we just learned spell level two all right and this means that look what we have now. Not only before when we looked at this, we had healing, but we also have now the spell escape and we have a air blast spell, okay? So we've learned these things by studying. So we're just giving our keeper something to do by building a library right away, these bookshelves. And guess what? The priest that we hired, look what he's doing. He's also studying. He can train on these bookshelves. So everybody's in here having a blast. I'm gonna put another torch in there make it nice and bright for people as they study. The imps are digging things, and this guy is busily working on the clubs. He's already made one of them. You can see this green progress bar filling up, okay? And let's see what's going on with the units and the club that we made. Where did it go? The keeper doesn't have it. 
The artificer doesn't have it. Ah, the priest. So what happens is, once you have equipment available, your units will just automatically want to equip themselves with things. And so this guy, Rugduff, our priest, has selected, hey, I want to use this club. It's gray because he doesn't have it now, but he's kind of like claimed it, and eventually he's going to go pick it up and wear it. Now, you can be like, that's totally cool, but you can also just manually select what your people have, what they can't have, and change their equipment that way. Okay? So we've got six beds built. And we're just going to be waiting and looking down here to see if we can get some goblin warriors or some other fighters to recruit. Because we want to fill up our population as fast as we can so that we can start doing some small skirmishes and expanding our empire, getting some gold and the like. Now, my bedroom does have six beds, but it's really not enough. So we're going to need to build another bedroom, and we're also going to need to build... A training room with a wooden dummy okay and anything else that we desperately need right now I think for the most part we're okay we can make a dining room uh, and some other things like that we can build uh, some traps outside if we want we can build a message board we could even build um, a poetry table if we want people to write poems to inspire others and things. But for now, this is a great beginning that we've got going out. So uh, we have our artificer making equipment. We have our bedroom. We have our priest and our keeper studying. Our keeper now is going to go discipline the imps who are digging these tunnels. We're going to try to access this ore. We're going to start carving out some other rooms to expand and things are cooking with gas. So everyone, I think this is a good place to end the first episode of this complete beginner's guide to Keeper RL. I hope you found this useful and it is basically my very thorough attempt to kind of teach you the controls, teach you some of the strategies and show you how to play this game because it's so much fun. It looks amazing and it's uh, you know, a single developer working really, really hard to make this awesome game. It's constantly evolving and changing. So if you have any questions for me, I'd love to chat with you in the comments below and help you understand the game. And I'll re be releasing some more episodes of this to show you this progress further and show you some new things, show you combat, and get into everything that we can do in this amazing game. Thank you so much for watching. Take care, everybody.